Hi, this is Dr. Graves from CSUN Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This is a video tutorial dedicated to helping students understand how to calculate the nearest neighbor index in ArcGIS Pro using the nearest neighbor tool in this software. What you see before you is a map of the San Fernando Valley with a variety of point distributions in front of you. I could uh, uncheck a couple of these so you can see, for example, this is the distribution of donut shops in the San Fernando Valley, and I could turn that off. And uh, there's Walgreens, not only um, in the San Fernando Valley, but in the area beyond. Uh, the same thing with high schools. Now, some of these distributions one would expect to be well distributed or dispersed. High schools, for example, shouldn't be clustered because that would be a wasteful use of um, space by the school district. Uh, by the same token, uh, a franchise like McDonald's uh, has typically guarantees that each of the franchise holders will have a certain territory that they will control and none of the stores will sort of cannibalize each other too much. On the other hand, some uh, businesses or some activities uh, tend to cluster more and our task is to put a number to the amount of clustering. So let's go ahead and start um, our in-class assignment by taking a look at just two of these patterns. One is the McDonald's and one is the Walgreens. And that's what we'll do in class. Um, for the take-home assignment, I will have you look at uh, the donut shops in the San Fernando Valley along with some crime and the marijuana dispensaries and to see whether or not those are clustered or and the high schools. So the first thing that we need to do when we're considering um, the nearest neighbor analysis is to understand how the bounding box or the area under consideration factors into the determination of clustering. So if we are zoomed in, our, our area of concern is, for example, the McDonald's, and I could zoom to layer. So the software would consider this as sort of the default area under consideration. Now, for some reason, if we were to zoom way out, like this far out, obviously, if we considered all of North America as our area under consideration, there would be enormous uh, clustering going on. So what we have to do is to find a sort of happy medium. And there's multiple ways of doing that. One way, I'm going to go ahead and click the analysis and bring up the tools. And what you want to type in here is average nearest neighbor. And this is the tool that we're going to use. By default, the area under consideration would be the minimum and closing rectangle that would encompass all features or all selected features. And the units uh, would match those for the output coordinate system. Everything in here is in a projection, state plane 5, or maybe four for this area. So that is something else you need to consider. You need to have everything in a single projection because the software is measuring distances and without a projection it can't do that. So that area, we could leave it at the default, but the problem is that it would include a great deal of sort of the Tahunga area here and maybe chunks of the Santa Susana Mountains and some other things. So I like to try to 
cut out some of the area that I don't think should be considered. And one of the ways you can do that, I'm going to click on the Map tab and go to Select by Polygon. And this is a slightly laborious technique, but what I'm going to do is click on the each of these or most of points under consideration. So these are the Walgreens and the McDonald's and I'm going to sort of put a box around all of these spots under consideration and once I get everything that I want considered this sort of area, all of that area will be considered I'm going to double click on that and it's going to highlight the census tracts that make up this area. Um, and then if I want to, I could unselect some by holding, I believe it's the shift button down, the control button. Now I have to go back up here to select by rectangle and then control uh, the shift button down, or the control button down, and I can unselect some of these. Right, and so you should know how to customize your area. So I'm just selecting some of these neighborhoods. Maybe I don't want, I don't know, there's some that are not selected already. So this is, this is about how you would do that. And then what you would need to do is to open up the attribute table for the tracks. This is the area under consideration. And we just want to take a look at the selected records, for example. And I'll scroll over here. Now it has the shape area, so I could bring up the statistics for the shape area. And it's giving me a value, the selection, of 438 uh, million square meters. And if I added, you know, one or two things in under there, that's one way of getting it. If I wanted to also, I have a square miles from the census and I could uh, get bring the statistics up for that. And it's 168 square miles. And then if you go over here to uh, a Google window and, and type in something like uh, 168 square miles there's a conversion thing and we don't want square feet but square meters and again it gives us 435 million um, square meters so what I'm going to ask you to do for this assignment is to I'm, I'm going to close these um, attribute tables down and I'm going to clear the selections when we bring up the the analysis tool the uh, average nearest neighbor again what we're going to do is the distance method is going to be Manhattan distance because the San Fernando Valley uh, the streets are on a grid and there are rarely uh, diagonal streets but we're going to just give us a compromise and easy to remember area so it's 450 and then one two three four five six more zeros so 450 million square meters is what we're going to use for our area so that's the first thing so let's go ahead and select the input feature class and this is going to be McDonald's and if you want we will do it first time we're going to create a report and then click run Once it's finished, click the View Details button and you can select all and go ahead and copy this. And what I want you to do is paste it into a Word document. So I will bring up a Word document, bring it over, and we're going to paste in our 
um, our output report. And then we come back over here and, and click on the report file. And there it is. It tells us that McDonald's are dispersed, which is what we would expect. And so I'm going to snip this out, take a screenshot of it, And I can take this screenshot here and I'm going to paste that into the Word document as well. So now I have this report and I've done a terrible job, but there's my z-score and the p-value. And so this is highly dispersed, which is what we would expect. I'm going to run this one more time. And again, we're using Manhattan distance, but we're going to scroll, or we're going to zoom out here a little bit. And notice that there's Walgreens outside of our area. So what I want to do is to select in some fashion the Walgreens that are only in the San Fernando Valley. So I could tell it, uh, select the Walgreens that are, that intersect the San Fernando Valley tracks. Apply. So, and now just the Walgreens that I want are selected, highlighted in blue, and now I can run this tool again. So, Walgreens, Manhattan Distance, same area, and click Run. Click on the View T Details, right click, select all, copy, and bring it over to your Word document. Probably need to put this on maybe a new page. Paste it in, and then take a look at our nearest neighbor summary, which is an HTML page. You can find this whole thing if you just follow it and uh, take grab a screenshot of it. and paste this in. And this is your in-class assignment. What I want you to do is to, um, you will turn this in at the end of class and um, follow some prompts that are associated with the assignment. So that ends this video tutorial.